Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. It's me, Erica, and happy Valentine's Day. This is one of the rare times where I am actually recording the voiceover on the day it's being posted because I've been busy. <laughs> um, busy writing, busy living in my own world um, and not coming out of it. Um, but yeah, busy nonetheless. So today is Valentine's Day. My plans were originally to go to the bookstore, buy myself some books, <laughs> obviously, um, and go get myself a cinnamon roll from a local place nearby. Uh, and then my boss decided to add four meetings to my usually meeting-free day. So that is no longer in the cards. We'll go tomorrow instead. Um, and then tonight, me and my boyfriend will hang out, we'll probably watch a movie, and then play some video games together. Shout out to all of the people in long distance relationships like me, <laughs> where I can't really do much on Valentine's Day, um, except for, yeah, just watch a movie or something. Um, shout out to all the girlies, this is a girl's day, I don't care. <laughs> I don't care that I have a boyfriend, this one's for the girls, okay? If my best friend had called me today and was like, I wanna hang out with you, girl, I'm hanging out with you. <laughs> like, it's Valentine's Day. Um, so this spread is loosely va Valentine's Day themed. Um, there is a cow that you'll see. Um, it is from Cows of New Zealand on Instagram. And I have never seen a picture and pulled out my HP sprocket to print it as fast as I did with this adorable cow. They dressed their cows up as ghosts for Halloween. <laughs> so I have um, a ghost cow and now I have a Valentine's Day cow. Um, but other than that, this spread, it didn't necessarily turn out like amazing. It's not my favorite spread, but you know, what are you gonna do? I really like the Valentine's Day themed corner. Um, the excerpt is from the Perfectionist's Guide to Losing Control, which I've already talked enough about on this channel, so I'm not gonna bore you with it again. Um, but just finally getting to writing my review and printing out a particularly impactful um, excerpt that there's also a siren. I've recorded this voiceover like three times. I keep getting interrupted. Um, there was a siren last time and there's a siren this time. <laughs> Um, but this expert excerpt is about the difference between power and control. Um, and I remembered reading it and being like, wow, amazing, unique, accurate. And then going to try and find if there was any like psychology or philosophy behind it. Um, and there's not. <laughs> uh, like this is like, as far as I can find, the only description that describes power and control this way of like control is born of insecurity um and and need um or like a false sense of need and it's it's not very free versus power is inherent we all have it um it comes from a sense of confidence and knowing that we are worthy um, and it doesn't have to try as hard. So I thought it was very interesting. Um, but yeah, recommend this book, especially if you can't afford therapy or don't have access to therapy. It was a very good book, but that's all I'll say. There's my little Valentine's Day cow. She's so cute. She's the best. At least I think the cow's a girl. <laughs> um, I also just did 15 minutes of yin yoga because I woke up and I had to go to a meeting really early because of time zone differences. And... It's just not the day. Um, I hate waking up early. I am notoriously someone who like will sleep till 10.30 um, every day if I can. And that is why I'm so happy that I'm on the East Coast and I work on Pacific Coast time, which will change, unfortunately. But when I'm on the West Coast, I don't know if it'll change when I live there long term, but when I'm on the West Coast, I become a morning person. So don't know what that's about. Um, but when I'm, on the <laughs> when I'm on the East Coast, I prefer to sleep until at least 10 o'clock. <laughs> um, that is because I stay up pretty late. I stay up until like one or two usually. Um, but yeah, just 
weird circadian rhythm things, you know, slightly off and just slightly off of the normal. Um, but yeah, it was a good little yin yoga session just to kind of stretch my body, wake up. Um, and I got about 45 minutes before my next meeting. <laughs> As you can tell, I did not write talking points for this video. Um, other than, yeah, life's been really good lately. Um, I've definitely been in that mindset of like, I, I, I keep saying it in all my videos, I read and then I write, I read and then I write, I read and then I write and I hang out with my boyfriend. I go to the living room to talk to my sister. I've been seeing my niece. We get family breakfasts um, every weekend. Uh, birthdays coming up, long walks <laughs> on walking and hiking trails. And the last time I went for a walk, I just sat by the river and picked up, uh, began reading the next book. I already finished it. It was called The Bone Houses. Um, 10 out of 10 recommend that book. If you are a fan of like fairy tales, classic hero's journey, if you're really sick of like Akatar, <laughs> fairy smut, um, and you're just wanting a good, wholesome adventure, pick up the bone houses. Um, I would read the trigger warnings if you have recently lost someone because the book is a beautiful um, discussion about grief and closure around losing people. Um, and it was a five stars for me, not in the sense of like, it was massively entertaining and I was on the edge of my seat and my heart was beating really fast and the adrenaline was up and I was like, oh my God, what's gonna happen next? It was a five star because it was a, again, like just a beautifully crafted story that said so much without you even thinking about it. It had wonderful twists on, on the classic Cure's Journey. It's like zombies essentially but like it doesn't feel like you're reading a zombie book it's it was beautiful it was mystical it was otherworldly it was enchanting it's beautiful um and i began reading it by the river um while i was taking a walk and it was really nice the atmosphere was great 10 out of 10 <laughs> and then a few old ladies came by and asked if I had brought food and asked how I was doing and I was like, I'm doing great. Um, yeah, I do have a snack, <laughs> but it's a very short walk back up to the um, parking lot, <laughs> so I was fine. It was, it was a good day, um, and while I was on that walk, I kind of just, this, I literally posted it on my Instagram, so follow me there <laughs> if you haven't already, um, but I posted pictures from that day and the caption was you can always find me here which is Florence and the Machine song 100 years um, and it was just like that like I just had a realization of like yeah you can always find me here like this is my happy place like this is what I want more of I don't want a career which I've kind of always known but every once in a while it's nice to um, feel reassured <laughs> um, that like you're doing what you need to do and maybe that's not what everyone thinks you should do um but that's okay like i if i could spend the rest of my life <laughs> going on walks in the middle of the day when the trails aren't busy reading a book eating a quick snack and then going home and doing some work for a few hours and then losing myself in a book and then writing until like 3 a.m like why would i not want that like that makes me so happy and the way I've been feeling the past month has been so grounded and in my body and so present and genuinely feels like I've healed something that needed to be healed that I didn't even realize was there um why would I not choose that so I guess here's your daily reminder that you don't gotta do what everyone says you should do and even if quote, you're not being ambitious enough or you have a little life, that's okay. And at the same time, if you are really ambitious and you really want a career and that's what you pour your soul into and that's what you choose and that's what brings you fulfillment and pleasure and peace, do that. Like literally the older I get, I'm not even that old. <laughs> I'm going to turn 24 next week. Um, and the older I get, the more I realize like, 
screw what other people think like everyone just needs to mind their own business and their own beeswax a lot more like we need to not care so much about what other people do we need to not talk about what other people do like who cares it's their life let them do what they want as long as it doesn't affect you or hurt you um who cares <laughs> that's kind of my opinion um but yeah that's kind of how life's been lately didn't mean to get super deep on you but I think I have a tendency to do that in these videos at this point, especially, listen, I just woke up, I did yoga, I'm in a vaguely meditative mindset <laughs> right now. Um, I finished writing the third book, the first draft of the third book in a series I have been working on since middle school. Um, I have probably written the first draft like five times, but the first draft sorry, the first book has been low-key finished um, for like a few years now and I really struggled with the second. I had written a, a lot of different versions <laughs> um, of both the second book and the third book, um, but this year I really sat down and was like, you know what, no, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it right. I'm going to figure it out. And so I figured out the second book in like maybe a month and a half, um, 130,000 words. <laughs> I talked about it in a video. Um, and then I went straight into the third book because um, I just felt the third book was a little harder because um, I had an idea of where I wanted it to end um, and just kind of, which is usually the opposite. Usually I'm, I'm, a, I'm a panster. I don't plan. I kind of just see what my characters want to do. <laughs> I treat them as if they're people and I really try and ask myself, like, what would this person do? Like not what I want them to do, not what I want the story to be like, what would this person do and how would the story end up if I just let them be who they are? Um, but I had a sense this time of like, no, I want, I want it to end this way. Um, and so trying to figure out how to get my characters there and make it still feel natural for them. And who knows, maybe in the second draft, I changed my mind completely, but I, <clears throat> it's also a little short. It's only 75,000 words, which is about how long the first one is. The first book needs a couple of scenes added, um, just some character relationship development scenes, but like the plot's fine. Um, and in contrast, this third book, I feel like I was swimming through some of it, um, so it's probably a lot shorter. But anyway, first drafts are first drafts. Um, and then I went back and I reread my whole series. <laughs> um, and I was reading one of my favorite scenes in the second book and my boyfriend was trying to talk to me and I was like, I'm sorry, I'm going to need you to be quiet for five to ten minutes because this is my favorite part of the entire series. This is such a beautiful scene. I love it. Don't speak to me. And he literally blinked at me and was like, Erica, you literally wrote it. You know what happens. These are your characters. Like, you've probably read this like a thousand times. And I was like, I don't care. <laughs> don't speak to me. <laughs> my, my my characters are charactering, please stop. Um, I also recently saw a post on Tumblr that said that my original character, it was, it was in reference to drawing, but it was very relevant to writers too. It was like making my original characters kiss is the equivalent of my six-year-old self making my Barbies kiss. Um, and that is exactly what my favorite scene is, is it's not my Barbies kissing, it's not my little baby characters kissing, um, but it is them having a moment <laughs> together. If you watched my perfume spread, um, it's kind of what I talked about in that book of like the one of the characters gives another character perfume as a gift. Um, very intimate scene with some gloves and some skin brushing. Um, very wholesome too. Nothing, nothing spicy, I swear. But it's just like one of those like wholesome, cute moments that I'm like, everyone, shut up! <laughs> everyone, shut up! Let me live in this moment forever. <laughs> um, so yeah. That's what I've been up to. Right now I'm just journaling, journaling away. Um, I didn't really journal about the excerpt that much because I didn't really feel like there needed to be anything said and then I had so much white space and I was like, what do I do? And then I was like, I'm gonna write about how cute this cow is. Um, so then I wrote about how cute the cow is and then I wrote the sources. And then I realized that I didn't write about the book as a whole. So then in the sides, I wrote like a book review for the book. Um, but anyway, yeah, so I finished a third book um, and I looked at my boyfriend and I was like, so I finished and he was like, yeah. And I was like, you know what I'm going to do now? And he was like, dear God, what? And I was like, mm, I'm going to write the entire second and third book from 
another character's perspective. <laughs> Um, which I feel like is a good strategy. If you want your characters to feel really deep and kind of avoid that main character syndrome where your main character is like the only important thing in the world and everything revolves around them, if you want to avoid that because that's not how real life works, I really encourage you to write things from other characters' perspectives and kind of explore, okay, what are they doing in the midst of this? What are they up to? They don't just go into the void when they're not in a scene with the main character, like, what are they doing? What are they like? What problems are they having? Um, and I think it just enables you to have, kind of explore your other characters more, and then I find that it naturally bleeds in, especially through dialogue um, and mannerisms. You kind of, and again, this might just be me, because again, I feel like my characters kind of speak and reveal themselves to me, almost like they're ghosts or something. Um, again, like they're real people, it's weird. And so I feel like I'm discovering who these characters are the more I write with them. I don't ever sit down and do character sheets. I kind of just let them come into existence and form. Um, so writing from other perspectives of different characters really helps me find out their mannerisms and their quirks. And then I find that the dialogue in the main story, in the story, like even, not, even if none of it's going to get published, um, the main story that you end up going back and writing just becomes a little bit richer and a little bit more like it just bleeds in a very natural way and you don't even realize it's happening but yeah get to know your characters treat them as their people treat them as fully formed humans and not just objects that you are throwing into a world and seeing what they do um yeah treat them as fully formed people that's my advice <laughs> Um, life advice too, treat other people as fully formed human beings that you realize that you might know little to nothing about. I think about this all the time. Like, I don't know what my mom does during the day, right? I'm not sitting there next to her. I don't know what my boyfriend's brother does. I don't know what his insecurities are. I don't know, like I know enough about him, right? Like he's not a complete stranger. Um, but I do feel a sense of dissociation a lot of the time when I look at people and I'm like, how much do I really know about this person? Like, I'm not in their head. I'm only in my head. And so they have like this whole world <laughs> in their mind that I cannot access and I cannot see and they can only, I can only know what they share. Um, and it just offers a little bit of perspective sometimes. And yeah. We are finishing up the book review. I lost my... Well, I didn't lose. They were in the back of this journal the whole time, okay? But I didn't know where they were at the time. <laughs> so uh, I would have plastered down some of my silver stars. I think I gave this book about four and a half stars. The Perfectionist's Guide to Boosting Control. I gave it four and a half stars because I think if you've never been to therapy, you will find much more value in it than I did. I've been in therapy for two years, and so it was kind of like rereading everything my therapist has already told me. It's a little bit less valuable for me. Um, I would have put the star grading in stickers, but I didn't have them. So this is one of the few spreads that does not have a silver star. Might go back and add one because every, well, every spread needs, psh, every spread needs a pretty silver star. Like we're toddlers getting 10 out of 10 on a kindergarten quiz. Um, but anyway, I hope you guys have a lovely day. Uh, you guys 100% deserve it, and I hope you have a lovely Valentine's Day. If you haven't heard it recently, you are loved, you're so important, and this day is for you, whether you're single, dating, um, hurting, healing. This day is for you, and you're loved, and you're important. Um, and I hope you have a lovely, lovely day, because you guys 100% deserve it.